Local authorities investigating recalls by major tuna brand. And in sports, Springer and Lester Vaughn out front going into day two of the secondary school's athletic championships. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Lord with the CBC Evening News. In our top story, as Barbados Water Authority workers continue their industrial action, General Secretary of the Barbados Workers Union, Tony Moore, is making it clear that money is not the sole reason for the protests. Ms. Moore says the workers are demonstrating because the authority's management did not stick to their end of the agreement. She adds that workers will demonstrate for as long as necessary. The workers are demonstrating. The workers are demonstrated not simply because money is owed to them. The workers are demonstrating because, yet again, the management of the Water Authority is proving that trust, trust, respect, and honoring of commitments are not words in their vocab that are more than words in their vocabulary. They are not acting in accordance to sound industrial relations practice as we know it in Barbados. Meantime, BWA shop steward Carl Boy says the industrial action is not being taken against the people of Barbados. He says the workers are looking for a proposal from the BWA so that work can go on. Meantime, Chairman of the Barbados Water Authority, Dr. Atlee Brathwaite, says he sympathizes with Barbadians who may be affected as workers remain off the job. Although saying this morning he's waiting for a briefing from BWA General Manager Dr. John Wanza and other members of the negotiation team about the strike, Dr. Brathwaite acknowledged that it will have a serious impact. He says Barbados is already in the midst of a drought and facing ongoing challenges with water leakages and a lack of water in reservoirs, which is especially affecting consumers in the north of the island. He noted that if drivers are on strike, community tanks in those areas have less chance of being filled, therefore creating greater domestic hardships for those residents. He gave the assurance that the authority will consider emergency measures to satisfy its valued customers, but recognized that with a depleted workforce, this will be increasingly difficult. Well, officers from the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs are actively carrying out investigations and checks to ensure that batches of two popular brands of tuna recalled in the United States today are not on Barbadian shelves. Ryan Broom has more. Two U.S.-based companies are at the center of the voluntary recall. The first is Bumblebee, and the second is Tri-Union Seafoods, which produces the Chicken of the Sea tuna brand confirmation of this from the Commerce and Consumers Affairs Department. A standards inspector told CBC News that their officers carried out checks of the most recent containers of bumblebee tuna imported by the major local distributor earlier today. Following that inspection, the officers were able to verify that none of the bumblebee tuna in the shipment matched the batch numbers that had been recalled. However, the inspections are ongoing to check on other importers. Meanwhile, News of a similar recall by Chicken of the Sea tuna came afterwards, and inspectors are now also actively investigating those shipments. The Bumblebee recall includes 31,579 cases of tuna produced in February. The San Diego-based company said deviation from a sterilization process in a facility not owned or operated by Bumblebee could result in contamination by pathogens, and this could lead to life-threatening illness if consumed. As for the Chicken of the Sea tuna recall, it involved just over 107,000 cans. In that case, the company said the meat may have been undercooked due to an equipment malfunction which was uncovered during a routine inspection. It said this could cause contamination by spoilage organisms or pathogens which could lead to life-threatening illness if consumed. Ryan Broom, CBC News. A major discovery and a new study here in Barbados could be life-changing for people living with type 2 diabetes. The research has revealed evidence suggesting that the condition can be reversed or even put into a state of remission. The groundbreaking findings were announced during a news conference at the Diabetes Center in Warrens. Shane Seeley has the story. Type 2 is the most uh, common form of diabetes 
a chronic disease where blood sugar levels are higher than usual. In the Barbados Diabetes Reversal Study, the 25 people who participated were monitored for an eight-week period. They were put on a low-calorie diet along with exercise and were taken off their diabetes and other medication. Project manager for the study, Dr. Karen Bino, says the group was monitored for an additional six months and were told to maintain their diet and exercise regimen. She describes the results as encouraging. Most persons actually were able to maintain the weight that they lost um, during a six month period. And the blood glucose level reduction uh, was maintained um, for about 38% of persons at the end of the study period. So at the end of eight weeks, we actually had 60% of persons with blood glucose levels below seven, which is considered to be a non-diabetic range. And at the end of the eight month period, we had 38% of persons maintaining those non-diabetic blood glucose levels. Dr. Oscar Jordan, the chairman of the Barbados Diabetes Foundation, says the study could have serious implications for the management of the condition in the future. But he warns that this method will not work for all diabetics. The fact that there's a limitation on who is eligible to enter this study, people who have only had diabetes for less than six years. The fact that people with type 1 diabetes are excluded from the study you know, means that it's limited to those who fit the criteria. And it's very important if we're going to deal with the question responsibly to make sure that there's adequate control and supervision. Now, there's also a fear that some patients could rebound or return to diabetic levels if they don't maintain their diet and exercise. Professor Nigel Unwin, the principal investigator with the project, says that's why he prefers to call the outcome of the study diabetes remission rather than reversal. So remission means you can get rid of it, but you need to maintain a healthy lifestyle. You need to keep the weight off to maintain the benefits of this intervention. It's not reverse and now I can do anything I like, you know. Uh, it's, it's remission and it's about maintaining a healthy lifestyle going forward. This diabetes research will continue according to all involved and they're hoping that the experience will lead them to a solution for more people living with diabetes. Shane Seeley, CBC News. A St. Michael man who had two of his sons chained and otherwise restrained at their bank hall home has pleaded guilty to two counts of wrongful confinement today. Bentley Webster appeared in court and has been granted bail pending a pre-sentencing report. He is expected to reappear in court on April 26. Now, the situation came to light after police went to Webster's St. Michael home yesterday following reports of forced confinement of his 19 and 23-year-old sons. Coming up after the break, the estimates debate continues in Parliament. Say hello to Chelsea. Chelsea is a champion surfer, so she's accustomed to moving super fast, which is why she relies on super fast broadband brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her family sharing and surfing and saving each month. Combined, she bundles her Flow mobile, home phone, and TV services so she can enjoy much more for much less, and so can you. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994, or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One-of-a-kind connection. This is how we flow. When we use our passion to create something special, we cherish the experience that brings the result. It isn't always smooth sailing, but that's the beauty of it. Because through experience and the help of knowledgeable partners, we learn and grow together. And we dream bolder dreams for the future. Confident that your passion and our expertise will bring an ever bright tomorrow. ICBL, always there when you need us most. This is where I learn. Courage is what I got from experience. With hard work, there are no walls between me and my dreams. Only Milo contains ActiveGo, which is a blend of protomalt, a unique malt extract, 
and micronutrients to help prepare your child to get the best out of their day. Thanks, Mom. Now I am ready. Milo, energy food drink of champions. Distributed by Massey Distribution. And everyone looks at it and calculates. Greening, development, trees, concrete, and nature, money, and they come to a clash. And you and I can tell what happens. Trees of the Silent Sentinels, Sunday at 7.30 p.m., repeated on Saturday at 6 p.m. Trees of the Silent Sentinels. Transport Minister Michael Lashley says construction of the new bus terminal is proceeding smoothly. He made the comments in Parliament as the lower house examined the estimates head, noting that the new facility is costing $3.5 million. We have started the construction of the river terminal. Um, it was launched in December. Uh, it is being constructed by um, the workforce from the Ministry of Transport and Works. The, the building that um, he mentioned, we've gotten a report, an uh, engineering report on the building um, in terms of its structural integrity, and that report um, is positive. Tourism Minister Richard Seeley believes plans to widen the ABC highway must be accelerated. This as he commended successive governments for repairing and fixing the island's roads, charging that about 70% of them are in good order. I would hope, however, that the plans to widen the ABC Highway also will be um, accelerated. Uh, I know that has been on the, 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 the cards for a while, but we are we're reaching that point, or we have reached that point, where uh, larger elements of the ABC Highway need to have the, the dual carriageway in either direction. Um, it's, it was always anticipated from the time the, 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 the uh, highway was constructed. Uh, we, are, we are getting getting to that point, which probably even further necessitates the move to deal with the, the vending situation. Don't let's wait for a tragedy. Concern about the survival of UCAL. Opposition St. Michael East MP Trevor Prescott says it's time the Transport Minister does an investigation to see how some of the concerns of the workers in that organization can be addressed. Mr. Prescott notes that the debt owed to UCAL amounts to about $22 million and efforts to bring this down incrementally seem not to have worked. They're saying that work is allocated to other mechanical shops across Barbados and UCAL, which ought to have had the protection of the, the, the corporation, that UCAL is not enjoying that good company. They're also saying that the, uh, a promise was given that uh, they were entering into a new contractual arrangement with them since last year, and um, it's now three months, and they're, they're, they're actually operating in limbo, unclear on um, what the relationship is between UCAL and the transport board. Well, the Barbados Investment and Development Corporation may need to look at other ways to market the work of vendors it lends assistance to. This was the cry from vendors taking part in the second Barbados to come from marketplace along the Princess Alice Highway today. There were scores of vendors outside the Bridgetown port along Trevor's Way and into Pelican Village today but in some cases, no buyers. One cruise ship was in the port, but visitors from all reports left the port in tour buses and headed across the island. The few visitors we did see walked by without stopping, all with the exception of this visitor from Sweden, who purchased a miniature painting from watercolor artist Albert Barnwell. He says the time of today's event may have been off. It's just one trip, and um, you really can't do much, you know, with, with X amount of, of people passing through. If there's a larger amount of, you know, um, it, it would be more, much more rewarding. When we reached the booth of Bejanique, Lucette Trotman was busy with a sale. 
her business specializes in natural skin care products, especially soaps. She believes the marketplace is a good idea, but something more needs to be done to get the visitors to stop buying. We would always, we would all like our products to take off and we, we don't want to go home with anything but money, you know, and um, it would have been a lot of exposure for us, especially to get our products going over the sea. Ashlar Designs sells customized jewelry, clothing and bags. Owner Charlene Maynard says the day was very slow and the visitors simply did not come. So far there have been one or two people coming to stop by but in terms of sales it hasn't been very many and I guess they look like they're on a mission. They want to go, they want to see town and then they want to go back to the ship. Oz specializes in gluten-free products and while there was some interest from locals, Patrice Stout says something must be done to market the businesses to a foreign audience. It's a good one for the exposure, but business-wise, it's a kind of, you know, slow. It seems as though Barbados is toasting a centenarian every week, and the newest lady to join this group is Muriel Greenwich. Ms. Greenwich celebrated her milestone among family and friends at the Gentle Folks Nursing Home where she currently resides. She lived for many years in Maxwell Hill and worked as a domestic before becoming a homemaker. Ms. Greenwich never had any children but raised many of her nieces and nephews. Her great nephew Colvin Small was among them. He says she was very good to him and even though she was not a disciplinarian, she kept him in line. I was thinking last night that one of the things I remember most about her was she kept me up one night after midnight learning the time on the clock. Yes, so she, she did very well. I thank her. A bit of housekeeping now. Multi-choice television is conducting scheduled maintenance at its Gun Hill repeater this Saturday for about four hours from 10, 7 a.m. until 11. This will result in service outages in some areas. Customers in the Turnpike, Rowans, Rock Hall, Walkers Farm, Jericho, Workman's, Thorpe's Cottage, Allerton, Jordan's, Good Intent, Freehill, Charles Road Bridge and surrounding districts will be affected. MCTV apologizes for any inconvenience this may cause as it seeks to improve the quality of its service. We'll still to come and look at some of the stories making headlines across our region.